Danny, this is the video I shot on the range the other day. Um, and all swings are about the same, whether it was a good good hitting day or not. Uh, um, on, on the right here, you can see this is the part of the swing that is really good. Coming through impact, look at this release. You got the hip action. The hip action is really good. You release the club, your head stays behind the ball. I mean, that's as good as, that's a low single digit uh, move right there. Now, as far as the lower body, it's a little late. If we get your hips there at impact, or there at impact, uh, it'll be better. But the thing is that this good impact and post-impact action uh, really uh, bails you out because you, you start from a, uh, uh, a pretty weak position, uh, like I was telling you on the range today. Um, well, let's go back to this other thing. This is what I meant by it was a little bunched. So that was, that was the good part, this nice single-digit action through the ball. But look at the spot you get here at the top take away see how those arms are collapsed so you've got the width here you got width of somebody 410 um, now what you do is a nice job of trying to reestablish the width see that but that's an extra movement it has to have perfect timing but uh, but look look this this uh, Body pivot is really good here, Danny. See how you, you're leaning away from the target here, leaning towards the target, really good. I mean, again, that's, that's like single-digit quality. This collapse of the arms, and see how close your hands are to your head. Um, here's Adam Scott. See how... He has, he has max width. Now, he's obviously taller than you and I, but he's maximized his width. Look at that. Versus your width. And when he gets to the top, see, we can't get there, but we can get here. We can get right there. You know, he's got similar angles, so... That's what I'm saying. Your body pivot's fine. You just need to increase your width. It's really good. Here's where the trouble starts. Take it in here. That's perfect. That's as good as you can possibly get right there. Let me draw some plain lines. Now your swing plane is any line parallel to the this uh, shaft line, um, and the club head shaft and the hands have to remain on a line. Anytime you break the plane, you have to make a compensating move to get back on it. Look at that; that's like perfect. It's then you end up. A, it's a little steep here. As a matter of fact, quite a bit steep. It should be parallel to one of these lines. And then what happens is you get bunched right in here. Hands get very close to the head. Shaft gets across the line. The trouble with across the line is, watch this, when you start down, way too steep. See how far off you are from the yellow line? Now what you have to do, you're a good athlete, so what happens is you work your knickers off to get it on plane, right there. So in the middle of your swing, see that's right on plane. In the middle of swing, you have to go from the red line to the green line, and that's where your inconsistency comes from. Sometimes you don't quite get it to the green line. Sometimes you get it more to the green line. But if you don't make any adjustments and come down that steep, you're going to hit it fat. 
and then what happens is because you're coming down steep you're going to have to stand up watch your spine angle see how you're standing up that's because if you don't make any adjustments you're going to stick a fork in it right behind the ball you have a tendency to probably to go left uh, because and maybe even hook it that one went right and what happened there was you laid it down too far it got stuck behind you so you blocked it this is what almost put Stricker out of business out of golf business coming down too steep if you lay it down too much like you are here see the club heads behind you you'll block it and hit it right if you don't lay it down enough you'll pull it or hook it so you can't take out one side of the fairway but as you come down you're making this great compensating move but you lose your spine angle and so what we do is keep it all on plane so you match Adam Scott perfectly right there then we kinda lose it see how he's right on plane So he rides up the plane, then down the plane. See? That never breaks the plane. So he can handle a little bit of quickness because he doesn't have to make any compensating moves. And that's all, that's all you have to do is keep it on plane with more width. So what I'll do is, here, and I'll give you a, here's Adam Scott's, and you just mimic this action. You know, your hips are a little late, but I, I'm thinking if you get it on plane, then I think your hips will have the advantage of uh, getting going earlier.